Hello everyone, Claude Victor Alpha 2 Charlie Sierra Tango. Today I would like to share with you how to tune and calibrate the reference oscillator on the ICOM 7300 with the help of WWV or CHU Canada reference clock but without the use of the integrated calibration marker or an external signal generator to zero beat your transceiver. This method would also work with the 7610, 7851, 705, and probably also the 7700. Any other model that do have an audio scope could use that method. But there will also be another solution for radios that do not have an audio scope. The audio scope will be a nice visual reference to zero beat the transceiver to a reference clock. This method could also work with any other radios with your ears only. If you have musical ears, that method is for you. And you would be able to get really close to be spot on frequency with your hearing only. You can put headphones while watching this video and you might hear the difference even at only one hertz resolution change. If your radio does not have an audioscope, you can use an external oscilloscope to monitor the tone of a transceiver as a visual reference. As a suggestion, you could use a free software called Fritzur. And within that software, you can use either the USB audio interface of your radio or simply use the speaker output of your radio to your computer sound card and it would work. Link to download Fritzer application will be in the description and I will also demonstrate how to use the software. First, you are going to pick the audio scope from the 7300 menu button. I put mine full screen to have the widest view of the audio trace. Secondly, we need to set the transceiver in CW mode. Once in CW mode, you will choose a CW frequency pitch by pressing the multi button. On my end, I chose 375 Hz, which isn't too harsh on your hearing and low enough that the trace can clearly be visible on the audio scope. What is going to happen is that we are going to compare with the help of the carrier emitted by WWV or CHU Canada the frequency tone of 375 Hz that will be heard on either the lower side of the fundamental frequency when we are set in CW or on the upper side of the fundamental frequency when we are in CW reverse. To verify this, hit the menu button, then set function and scroll to page 6 of 8, find CW normal side to be set in lower side then, this should be the default value. You can use any other CW frequency pitch you would like, but you might need to set the audio scope parameter a little bit differently than in my example. Third, we need to set the filter really really tight. On the 7300, it will be 50 Hz wide in CW mode. This will isolate any other artifact like chatter or the second speed that the transceiver can receive from WWV or CHU Canada and make the audio scope unstable and difficult to read. As you can see right now, the audio filter is wide and the audio scope is jumpy. With a tight filter, the audio scope gets a lot more stable. And here you can see with the filter set to 50 Hz wide, watch how the audio scope becomes a lot more stable. In order to have a nice representation of the audio trace on the scope, I will set the level at minus 30 dB and a time constant of 10 milliseconds per division. Faster or slower than these parameters will not have enough or too much details. At 10 milliseconds of division, you are going to watch the far right side of the scope and look at the tail length of the audio trace only. 
So this will be only that tiny part right here. Now watch the length of the tail when I switch from CW to CW Reverse by selecting the CW mode again. Now switch between these two modes and if you hear or see significant change in the tone in your ears or on the trace tail length, you are not centered on frequency. Now, my radio is already calibrated, but just to show you what a single hertz out of tune would do, I will move the VFO frequency up by one hertz only. Now, see the difference on the audioscope trace, and when I switch from CW to CW reverse, when there is only one hertz of a difference, you can also listen closely with headphones, and many of you might hear the frequency tone shift a tiny bit. We can do the same by removing 1 Hz instead, and you will notice the same issue with the two mode. Now, watch the length of the tail trace here. And I'm going to switch back and forth from both mode. And now I'm going to remove 1 Hz and watch the length of the trace here. Now, like I said previously, my radio is already calibrated. But just to show you how the TCXO has drifted from its original settings, I will reset the value to the default setting and you will see and hear how the tuning has changed over time. Now those are the default values than when I bought the radio brand new. Now watch and listen to the tone and you will see and hear a clear difference between the two modes. Just to show you now how many hertz the radio has drifted, I will move the VFO until the audioscope trail tail length is centered again, and we will be able to see how much the TCXO has drifted from 2018 to 2023 from its original values. You can see that in order to be spot on frequency when I switch from CW to CW reverse, the audio trace tail is centered when I add 3 Hz to the VFO. This is how you can determine if your radio is a bit off frequency right out of the box. So now with the addition of 3 Hz, I'm going to switch from CW to CW reverse and you can see that the tail is really really centered. And if I add one more Hz, you can clearly see a difference and if I go back there is audible and visible change in the tone and when I add three we're pretty much back centered on frequency right so now let me retune the reference oscillator setting to add the adjusted value and the radio will be on frequency again.
Now watch on the scope here. And we are back on frequency. If you wish to use the Fritzer app scope with the 7300, simply run the app, open the setting tab, and pick the right sound card you want to monitor. On my end, I chose the IC7300 sound card and select a single left channel, which works fine for what we're trying to do. Next, you will need to pick the scope in here and then hit the setting icon, then set a time range of 30 milliseconds per division. Once uh, everything is set, you should see a clear sine wave and just like described previously, you can monitor either the far left or far right side of the trace and check the length of the tail trace. On Fritzer, you can watch both sides uh, because the center frequency is right in the middle. So you have minus 15 on the left and plus 15 on the right which is 30 milliseconds total. Whereas on the radio, it starts on the left at 0 millisecond and 10 milliseconds on the right far side. So now I'm going to switch from CW reverse and CW, and you will see that just the positioning right here won't change when I switch from CW to CW reverse. If I do the same thing if I add a single hertz on the radio right here and I switch from CW to CW reverse you can see that the trace is now ending at zero and now it's back well over zero we do the same thing by subtracting one uh, move from CW to CW reverse same thing again Right, you can see the value is way over and now it's at zero. If I come back right on frequency and switch again the mode, we will be again right on frequency. And just for the last test, I'm going to reset the original values of the reference adjustment on the 7300 to the default values and watch and listen how much it changed when I switch from CW to CW reverse. This is how much 3 hertz of a change looks like. Uh, you could also monitor the peak uh, right here on the top and you can see the clear shifting also on that peak. So there you go. This is how you can tune your transceiver with the help of WWV or CHU Canada with a simple audio scope or your hearing only. I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.